Hello! In this video series consisting of four parts, I will try my best to explain to you how to read the chart of nucleides. What is the chart of nucleides? The chart of nucleides is basically like a periodic table, but on steroids, because the periodic table contains every element from element number one to element number 118, and the chart of nucleides contains every isotope of every element up to 2006, because I don't have a newer version of this. In this video series, I will have to assume that you already know what the alpha decay, what the beta decay, and what the gamma decay means. And let's get started, right? So this is a small version of the chart of nucleides. The full scale one would just be a stripe across my whole room. And this is why you read the chart of nucleides like this with increasing proton number up to element number 118, which is now called organesson. So let's begin. The proton number doesn't increase as in the periodic table moving downwards and to the right. Instead, in this case, it increases from the bottom left to the top right. This is because the nucleides are also ordered according to the corresponding neutron number, which is depicted on the x-axis. So moving diagonally to the upper right in reading direction increases both the proton and the neutron number each time. The nucleides positioned on this imaginary axis to the upper right are so-called isodiophiles to each other. Here the ratio between protons and neutrons is always identical. Moving only along the y-axis from the top to bottom changes the proton number and thus the element, but not the neutron number. These nucleides are called isotones. Moving only along the x-axis changes the neutron number and not the proton number, so the element remains the same. These nucleides lying on this axis are isotopes of each other. For example, carbon 12, carbon 13, 14, 15 and 16. Now there's one axis missing and it's the one where all nucleides have the same atomic mass. This is called the isobar. It extends from the bottom right to the top left across the chart of nuclei. It's important when it comes to chain yields. Alright, now to the most striking part about the chart of nuclei. The color scheme. We can see a black stripe basically running through the entire chart of nucleides, above it a red area and below it a blue area, and in the very back it turns yellow and colorful. Black means in this case stable. These nucleides do not decay. The ones marked in red are the ones that undergo beta plus decay or electron capture. Just as a quick reminder, in the beta plus decay a proton turns into a neutron and a positron is emitted. So the proton number decreases and the proton number increases. Therefore, during a beta plus decay, you move diagonally downwards and to the right through the chart of nucleides. In a beta minus decay, a neutron turns into a proton and an electron is emitted. The neutron number therefore decreases by one and the proton number increases by one. Therefore, during a beta minus decay, you move diagonally upwards and to the left through the chart of nucleides. Do we see a trend? They will all decay towards this black line. Once again, the better decays all decay towards this black line. This is why this black stripe is also sometimes called the valley of beta stability. Now we have this yellow patch back here. Those are the alpha emitters. These are extremely heavy nuclei that want to reach the valley of beta stability as quickly as possible. So during an alpha decay, two protons and two neutrons are emitted immediately. No time for any transformations, just get rid of them directly and shoot them out of the nucleus. So, minus two protons and minus two neutrons. Therefore, during an alpha decay, you move diagonally downwards and to the left. Now, if you get a step closer to the chart of nuclei, you will notice, besides the element symbol, another very important number. The half-life. This is the time it approximately takes for half the atoms to undergo this or that decay. You can quickly recognize the type of decay by the color of the tile. This was a very short overview on how to read the chart of nucleides on a basic level. A special thanks goes to the working group of analytics and fundamental nuclear chemistry from Dr. Eric Strupp and the division of nuclear chemistry at the University of Cologne and to my Patreons. With that being said, goodbye.